Hi there, and welcome to another episode of ABM Under the Hood. This week, I'm uh, pleased to say I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Lucy Jones, who is uh, Head of Content here at Strategic. Thanks for joining, Lucy. Hey, Jack. Glad to be here. Good stuff, good stuff. So today, we're going to be talking specifically about uh, content and um, mostly around kind of the topic of personalization in content when it comes to, to ABM. So, you know, personalization uh, in ABM is, is such an important aspect of of why it's, why it's ABM can be a successful kind of go-to-market strategy, right? Um, so, you know, just kind of top level, from your perspective, what, what do you think um, personalization and personalized content brings to an ABM, ABM strategy or ABM campaign? Excellent question. Um, I suppose just off the bat, a quick answer is because personalized content is just more relevant, right? So it'll boost your engagement if it's relevant to someone it'll build your relationship with them they'll trust you more if they're reading something that speaks to them um and obviously that leads into loyalty and revenue over time but i guess what i would do is just take a step back and think about what you mean by what is personalization because it can sound like this big scary word in content right how do i personalize this piece of content to someone it can sound really complicated to do it um but really all you're doing is just making a piece of content whatever that is whether it's video or something written um, you're just making it speak specifically to a person or an industry or a business or your account. Um, and all content does do that to a degree, whether it's ABM or not. Um, I guess a good place to start with that is empathy. So yeah, if you want to have your content speak to someone, be empathetic. I think of it a little bit like being a method actor as a writer. So any writer, doesn't matter what you're writing or what you're making, will sit in the feeling of who that person is, you know? I've never been I've never been a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. I've never been a CTO, but I do have the insights in ABM and the data to hand to know how that person feels, and I can empathise with them and sort of sit in that feeling of okay, imagine I've just taken on this role. Imagine I'm sitting on my desk day to day. What are my challenges that I'm facing? What do I need to solve? And how does this piece of content that I'm seeing recognise that? Yeah. So yeah, a big part of it in ABM is being able to be that conduit between the data, absorbing it, sort of almost becoming that person, if you were, and then letting that come out in the content in a way that just reflects what that person needs. Yeah, I think that's I think that's such a great point. And um, we always try and start with that kind of empathy process, right? We we as an agency run what we call empathy mapping sessions, which is where we try and get into the mind of the of the um potential buyer or, or target um contact and, and and really understand what their what their pain points are their challenges but but more so kind of that emotional side of things what's kind of keeping them awake at night what's their what are they thinking about all the time what's what's driving them and and how can in our case there are client solutions help you know solve that some of those problems for them and, and, and what message is is required to be able to communicate that and attach that to kind of that that feeling that they've got inside I think that's I think that's an absolutely kind of fundamental aspect of of why starting with that empathy, um, you know, in in mind is is a great great approach. And obviously, you guys in, in the content team are in that kind of mindset all the time, having to kind of shift from from one sort of type of person, you know, and their needs and wants to to, to another, um, which is you know where your expertise comes in. But obviously, yeah. from our side on the strategy strategy team, we we kind of provide you guys with as much information and insight and, and data, as you say, as we can to kind of get um, get you in that in that state of mind, I suppose, and give you as much information as possible yeah. to, to, so you can build that picture up, right? So how do you find, what, what, what's your kind of process for translating that that data and that insight into, into the, um, you know, in, in, into the kind of empathetic, personalized message that you're, that you're trying to craft? Yeah, how do we take that profile and create a little personality? Mm. Um, so, so yeah, I suppose what we do is because there's so much insight, so much data and so many trends around any account, right? So any anybody has got, you know, pages and pages and pages of data and insights and statistics that the best way to start is to just go through it, absorb it, distill it. And then what we do is write it into a value proposition for your campaign. So that's the, the quickest way to get anybody working on your campaign to know what is going on with this account is just to take all of that insight, take all of that data and turn it into a value proposition. And what that means is uh, essentially you're writing 
uh, some internal toting messaging, which is a summary of what the market, the account, um, the context around them is about. You're summarizing how your solution relates to them and just making it really obvious, really clear, really simple up to what your account needs, what are they struggling with, and how is, how is that solved in one or two sentences. So there are other parts of the value proposition. So you, that's just your main summary. Mm -hmm. There'll be a narrative that goes along with that. And messaging pillars, though, so three or four key imperatives that anybody working on the campaign needs to be aware of. Um, and from there, we kind of distill everything into a bit of a messaging matrix. So what what are the key priorities for your account personas? Maybe you've got two or three different kind of people that you're running your campaign around. How does this message speak to them? And just give a few little examples that anyone coming in can look and read and say, okay, now I've read that, I get what is the CEO having trouble with? What's the solution related to that? And what, what will the outcome be if they adopt this solution, essentially? Yeah, yeah. And it kind of becomes your Bible, really. It comes, yeah, whatever content it is you want to make after that, whether you're, I don't know, writing an ebook or making a video that speaks to, speaks to that person, mm -hmm. that's your foundation level. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think, I think um, having that kind of underpinning of, of a value proposition to be able to refer back to is is super important and also you know one thing i think that we see that that is really impactful is the ability to kind of layer on personalization into that value proposition depending on the type of program that we're running who we're targeting that kind of stuff so obviously you know if we're looking at a a, a one-to-many program the level of personalization is is going to be less because we're we're talking about you know a, a, a larger number of accounts you can't necessarily do that that level of personalization to each one um, or, or each individual within the account. But as you progress into a one-to-few and a one-to-one, -one, that personalization increases, right? And then, so that means from a messaging perspective, you can add, you know, levels of personalization, whether that's at the account level, whether that's at the stakeholder level, um, you know, that, that speaks specifically to, to that person or to that, that account. Um, having that kind of value proposition as a starting point allows you to kind of iterate on that, right? And build on top of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, your one-to-one -one is your super specific i'm speaking to you know three or four people with this one message your one to few is more of an industry um so certain accounts within a one specific industry and then one to many will be a cluster of things really it'll be a range it's much wider wider scope absolutely so in terms of in terms of creating personalized content then so we've, we've got that value proposition whether it's kind of uh, the messaging matrix that's kind of speaking to um, at the persona level, or if it's speaking even at the stakeholder level, depending on you know the type of program, etc. What do you find are some of the ch challenges in taking that that value proposition and turning it into a personalised message or personalised piece of content? It, anything that people should be aware of, kind of pitfalls when it comes to personalising content. Am I allowed to say all of it? Uh... <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there, are, there are key stages, yeah. Uh, I suppose, I guess as long as you have a foundation of understanding with that value proposition of who your account is and what they need, a lot of the time the message does just flow through. So what what that um, will be informed by is your, I suppose, your channel tactics. Once you know what kind of content will resonate with different people, you can kind of just adjust it. Um, this is a very right answer, I know. But you, yeah, you kind of just absorb the value proposition and go, hey, this is the language, this is the type of messaging, this is the specific industry jargon, and it, you can kind of just do it. Um, so you might change your headers, maybe if you've got a piece of existing content, you'll change 20% uh, of it, something like that, and just tweak some of the key trends, the statistics that are coming through it, um, some of the headers that just jump out in the design, just to make sure that it's really obvious to, to the person that you want it to speak to. Um, but a lot of the challenges, I suppose, really are just in terms of creating good content. What makes good content? It's something that's conversational, that speaks the language of the person that you're writing it for. It's something that uses short words and less absolutely necessary. So I suppose if you're writing for finance, there are going to be specific finance terms that you're going to need to use in there. But mostly, you know, people don't want you to sound like a dictionary. You just want to keep it tight on the page, keep it simple. Read it out loud to yourself as well. So going back to that, that method actor point, um, sometimes it helps to pretend to literally be that person mm. and read the content and go, yeah, does this speak to me? Is this how I would want to talk? Is this something that's going to go, yeah, yeah, this is right for me and my brain? Um, and get someone else to read it as well. Mm. So 
yeah. make sure that other people working on the account see it and say, yeah, maybe maybe rework that, maybe change this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. That's 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 a really good tip, actually. And it's that I didn't I I didn't really think about that to be honest, because obviously I'm not necessarily the one writing the content uh, for our clients and stuff. So I don't necessarily write, you know, um, read that stuff out loud in that way. I obviously read through the through any documents that you kind of share with me that if it's if it's for my clients and things like that. But I'm not necessarily reading it out loud. I might might start doing that to be fair. Um, quite quite a, yeah. quite a good. You, know, tip. you can look a little bit crazy at times, <laughs> just sort of standing in your room reading about you know market trends or something. Yeah. But yeah, it helps you can to get that conversational tone and something that's human. Yeah. Because what you're trying to do really is be human. You're trying to be authentic. You're trying to be conversational because you know everyone it doesn't matter if you're a B two B. Doesn't matter if you're a CEO. You don't want to read something that's boring. Yeah. You don't want to listen to something that's boring. You want it to, to speak to you as a person. Yeah. I think that's I think that's such a good point because so much of B2B content historically has been boring, yeah. right? And it's it's become almost a bit of a meme that like, you know, it's boring to boring or whatever. It's it is yeah, it, exactly. it's it it's not um it's not always the case. And and I've seen great content in B2B, you know, from from us and, and from other other areas as well. But there is a tendency towards because I think because I think people are picturing it as business to business, right? Whereas actually it's not. It's business. It's it's still person to person. It's still it's still human to human, and it's exactly that point of you know thinking about the individual behind that that's reading it. The the empathy with them allows you to then create content that is resonant, that is engaging, as opposed to when you're thinking about it in terms of targeting a business you're thinking of this kind of faceless you know corporation or whatever that, that, that it's very hard to kind of create anything that's actually feels meaningful or, or engaging in, in yeah. that scenario right exactly and i suppose the other side to that with being really human being really connected to your account focus that you're writing for is just try not to be creepy with it um. because there is it's possible because you've got so much data you've got so mm. much insight that i guess like jeff goldblum would say in Jurassic Park, you know, just because you can do it doesn't mean they should do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, use it in context. So if someone wants to read an email, don't start talking about, you know, the market trends in detail. You want to be conversational. You want to keep it, you know, light. Where if you've got ebook, again, don't do it the other way. Don't be like, oh, hey, Jack, how how was last night down the pub? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, you know, yeah. That's keep it into context. Yeah, and don't don't use it if, unless you have to. Yeah, no, that's it's a great point, and um, it kind of yeah it reminds me of that sort of that that phrase like the medium is the message, right? So, being being really aware of what type of message and tone works and resonates on what type of channel and and tactic. Um, you know, the way that you speak to someone on LinkedIn is going to be different to how you speak to them on the phone or in a um, email or, or anything, you know, and then particularly the type of, you know, if it's more like a, a webinar style content or video content is going to be different to an ebook. And, uh, you know, there's, there's obviously going to be some similarities in terms of the, the overarching proposition, but, but the actual, the way that it's kind of crafted is going to be a bit different, right? It's, 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 it, there, there's, there's nuances to each type of channel and tactic that you, that you use. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that, like the strategy team can help you with as well if you're not sure what what an approach is or how is this going to get into market it's something that before you start writing you should definitely understand okay what what is this how is it going to be seen by the audience and that helps to inform a lot of the language that you use the choices that you make while you're while you're writing it yeah yeah absolutely i mean we yeah we we work quite closely don't we when it comes to yeah. that kind of stage post value proposition trying to understand what the kind of creative concept is going to be um and the types of channels and tactics and assets that we're going to be creating and, and building you know that's for, from from our perspective in terms of the you know as a strategic marketing agency that's that's a you know there's quite a close alignment there and i suppose the equivalent for an in-house team would be the marketer you know the, the the content marketer working with the the you know digital marketer or the abm lead or whoever to kind of build that you know picture together um of the the data side and then the and then the sort of messaging side and the tactics yeah. as well you know all of that yeah it's the same way as i suppose as marketers and sales teams have to align the abm you kind of it's not just those two teams it's everybody so sales will feed information into content based on i don't know previous data that they've had previous interactions they've had with an account because that can all change your time as well right so if i'm writing a piece of content to an account that already knows about my business then I'm not going to be starting from scratch like hey did you know you could 
improve this and this with my with my solution it's going to be more and hey, you've done some great work together let's build on that and it just changes the angle of what you what you're making really yeah for sure yeah absolutely okay so one thing that we sometimes do depending on the the type of program i think it's more so the case at um you know one to few and one to many is scaling uh content creation with some level of either automation or or just processes that help us kind of scale so you know one for example is 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 that messaging matrix right if you've got a clear picture of like the, the messaging pillars you've got three messaging pillars for example and you can align those to specific accounts or personas then you can kind of create um you know content that that is applicable to maybe one or two or three individuals or one or two or three accounts or however many you know um accounts that you, you want to be going after but there are also other tools as well right that we that we can potentially use so is there anything from your side that you use like regularly or or maybe not as often but but you've seen benefit from in terms of being able to scale and and potentially automate some of the the content creation process it's a very relevant question right now because yeah i suppose ai is on everyone's minds a little bit at the moment um i suppose in terms of scaling at the moment we're just sort of testing out what what could we make more efficient what could we improve um and i guess the main thing to watch out for though is just so things that you're pushing out to market um automatically so whether it's email automation or message automation that's all cool that's easy that speeds up the delivery to the audience just make sure that obviously there's a check and balance with the person there that can jump in with the conversation when it does start um in terms of ai content we're kind of using it to see if we can help digest those insights a little bit more so where we've got a value proposition already to write that specific messaging we're looking at how we can speed up that that distilling process really because yeah anything that can pull out those key trends and help us get to it faster we're looking at in terms of actually creating content on automating that at scale that's something where i think you just need to be a little bit more careful to make sure that you're being authentic still because i mean it's ABM. You need to be human. You need to have that that constant human connection. And people are getting better at recognizing, I suppose, when when content is automated. So always have that check and balance. If you are using it to create a foundation or a level of something that exists, make sure that you go in and personalize it. Make sure that you've got that that messaging back in again from your value proposition that that just makes it look unique, really, and yeah. and keeps it authentic. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think that's yeah, very, really good points and and. I would say when it comes to that um, that kind of the personalizing versus scaling automating question, for me, it, it's somewhat down to A, the level of resource you have available to you, right? You know, the, the reality okay. is, is that you can't do personalized content for every single per- person or target account that you want, you want to do that for. It's just not going to be feasible unless you've got the world's biggest, you know, content creation team. Yeah. Um, but it, it comes down to be, being able to kind of analyze which accounts are, are the ones that you want to prioritize, right? So that, that kind of, the, the second point is essentially that for, for accounts that are maybe closer to revenue um, or moving in that direction, that's where you definitely want to start thinking about moving the needle towards the personalization side of things as much as possible and actually and actually do it, you know, in practice, doing personalized outreach and, and you know, content that is, is specific to, to the, the account or the, or the individual as opposed to the accounts that are maybe further away from that revenue that are maybe in the awareness stage or, or pre-awareness even, that's where you could potentially look at employing some more scaling, automating type tools, I think, as, an, as, a, as a first step into things. Yeah. Um, I would I would still probably hesitate a little bit to do that when it comes to like one-to-few and one-to-one, um, but it, certainly in a one-to-many, I think that's that's feasible. And then you know things like workflows um dynamic content as well i suppose is the other thing that that potentially is is something that can be useful you know dynamic content i think can sometimes sort of straddle that line between personalization and, and automation because if you get it right and you've got the data inputs right and everything it can mean that you you're serving up content that is relevant and does feel personalized but actually you're doing it in such a way that it's it's quite scaled and and, and somewhat automated right so yeah especially if your accounts have got a commonality between them mm-hmm. so they, you know they're, they're in a similar market or they've got similar challenges mm-hmm. and you can just tweak certain sections of it yeah again maybe like 20 percent mm-hmm. of what they're seeing on page yeah you could just tweak that to, to change once they yeah once they land on that page and it can just adjust a bit. absolutely yeah and i think and i think 
for me, it's it, the, as much as anything else, the setting up of the of the when you so so there's there's different levels of this, right? There, there's there's you know 101 ABM getting things started, getting content created, blah blah blah, which is sort of you know it's it's about just creating personalized content, probably as as manually as possible, uh, you know, in the start in the early days. But then I think there's a point where the technology stack that you maybe have available to you, the, the kind of foundations that you might have set up can really help with um, scaling and also can help with 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 automating um, some of the processes in such a way that it doesn't actually feel like they're being necessarily automated. So I'm thinking in terms of like the CRM, your CRM setup or your marketing automation setup can be done in such a way that the data is pulled in automatically, the context is pulled in. You know, if someone's been on a page they can be retargeted uh, or they could be, um, you know, served up, um, you know, more relevant content or w- whatever it might be. But each of these things to set all of that up in itself is quite a heavy lift, right? So it's it, it's it's the sort of one time heavy lift of personalized content versus the longer term heavy lift. But then in, but then eventually kind of running by itself of, of more automated stuff. But yeah, it, it, yeah. it depends on Once how you've got that. Right, yeah, so you've got the page, you can get people coming in and going, Oh, this CTA works for this type of person, this CTA doesn't, mm-hmm. and you can just iterate and just keep changing it until you get that, that messaging that works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, so obviously, when we're, t- when we're talking about personalization uh, and, c- and in content and, and for ABM, it's, it's not doing it just for the sake of it, right? Obviously, what we're trying to do eventually here is move people towards opportunities, revenue, all of that kind of stuff. So, how do you how do you think about the success kind of metrics of, of personalization in ABM uh, and content? Um, is it, are there any kind of specific um, KPIs or, or points to think about when it comes to how, how well um, a, a personalized piece of content is, is performing? I suppose it depends on what your goal is with the content. So if you're trying to raise awareness um, if you've got things like ads in channel, it's, you know, what, what clicks am I getting on those ads? Are they coming through to the content? That I, are they going to read it? Are they spending a long time on page? Is that relationship starting? Are they aware of who we are? Are they, you know, are they seeing that trust? Um, and if people are starting to come through your process, they're starting to book workshops, they're starting to engage with you, reply to your messages, then yeah, you're going to see that reputation build. You can see that trust build. Um, and hopefully eventually down the line, they're going to eventually buy your product and see revenue. But obviously that's, as a content writer, that's quite far down the line. And it's something that you have to, we work with your team, we work strategy, we work with the sales team. Um, we kind of get that information back again and create that loop of, yeah, this messaging's working. Maybe this messaging could do with tweaking a little bit. Um, yeah, and just try and try and see who's reading it. Are they engaging with it? And are you are you building that reputation mm-hmm. and that trust? Yeah, I, th- I, think that's, I think that's an absolutely spot on point really around uh, in terms of, building trust as a sort of overarching lens to, to, to view things through, right? Because people, it's the classic uh, quote of, yeah, people don't buy from people they don't trust. It's, it, it, it requires, in order to be able to get to the types of deals that we're usually talking about with ABM, where it's, you know, often sort of five, six, seven figures, you're not going to be doing that sort of deal with 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 no trust with, with the supplier yeah. or the solution, right? So there needs to be that level of trust there. And and I think content and personalized content is the is the perfect way to do that. And it's not going to be one piece. It's not going to be two or three potentially. You know, it could be lots and lots of, of engagements and, and interactions before that trust is built to the level that it needs to be in order to have that that opportunity and and, and deal come through. Um, yeah. But- yeah, it's not going to be one magic piece. You're not going to write one magic blog post. Um, no. And even now, like, more human content, I think, is going to just get bigger and bigger um, as we as we go through. So yeah. things like podcasts like this, or video, or face to face stuff that is authentic, that does show you who someone is. You know, you hear someone's voice. Um, it's just going to start building that, like you say, that human trust. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think um, the 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 biggest sort of white space open open space for for B two B marketing and ABM. Uh, over the next couple of years is going to be around that kind of influencer marketing approach, um, yeah. building building the, the personality and the reputation through individuals within the business. Um, you're starting to see it happen now. 
already there's been there's a couple a couple of kind of key influences in 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 certain areas i mean more so in more so in b2b marketing itself and abm itself if, if, if that makes sense but there will be in other industry other industries in b2b industries um as well you know thought leaders personalities that that mirrors the sort of growth of you know youtubers and tiktokers and and and, and vloggers and whatever else on on the sort of more b2c side or the the more yeah that kind of um yeah. content creation side i think i think there's a a big opportunity for businesses to tap into that and and again it comes back to that empathy side of things right it's easier to build that empathy when you're when you're coming from a peer-to-peer person-to-person kind of um perspective i, w- I would say exactly yeah it goes back to what we were saying before as well the b2b doesn't have to be boring it can be close to b2c because especially in abm you are speaking to a person you're speaking well i mean you're always speaking to a person mm. whatever the content is but it's easier to see it as individuals as you know specific businesses and yeah we've come a long way from from day to day books mm. i think yeah absolutely yeah yeah for sure um well i know on that theme actually so uh, we've had a question from um from uh Charlie Langley, who's um, wanting to try and push the boundaries of um, sort of her hyper personalized uh, content and, and ABM activities, um, she wants to understand where 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 people potentially um, think we'll, we'll be getting to in a few years' time with with personalized content. We've kind of touched on that a little bit in terms of AI and 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 maybe the influencer side of things as well, um, but what does it actually look like in practice like what types of content are we are we looking at um she asked is it is it just going to be a case of more ever more personalized ebooks or are there more exciting kind of content possibilities that could could emerge wow i well i think the possibilities are as wide as you want to make them um first of all again go back to that start that audience who who are you speaking to what does that person what are they going to engage with you know if they're a decision maker maybe they want some more quick form content, something that speaks more to their challenges more directly. How are they going to raise revenue? That kind of thing. If they're more of an influencer type personality, maybe they'll have the time to go into the weeds of what it is you want to talk about. So something that's a little bit more in depth, but yeah, things that are more human based, I think will get bigger and bigger over time. So podcast, video, direct messaging, chatbots, anything that's direct one-to-one. Um, and just, yeah, don't always feel that you need to funnel things towards a workshop either, I think, which is a good way to go because you see it quite a lot need to be that it's always we're trying to get you to our demo, we're trying to get you to our workshop. But remember that the person you're speaking to might not have the time for that or they might not want to engage in that way. So not everyone wants to join a Zoom call, not everyone wants to join a, a video. So think about what formats are going to engage that person. Are they going to be more susceptible to engage with um an FAQ page or something they can take away themselves mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah I, I think that's absolutely spot on because there's there there is a definitely a tendency to try and get people onto a call whether that's a whether that's a, a demo or a workshop as you say or just on the phone but and, and absolutely if you can get to that point often that is a good way of getting your foot in the door right but the the, the issue is as you say people are busy there's not there's not always that's not always the right thing for them in that moment in time and and, and actually sometimes it can be an, it can be a, a off-putting even if they're not ready to buy if they're not ready to have that conversation to then get on a call with someone it can actually be quite yeah it, it, it can actually put things back a little bit and um having that identifying what that kind of pre-call stage may look like or what an alternative to that may look like is i think probably where things could be differentiated the most uh, in the coming in the coming years because there's there's opportunity for that as you say that kind of like self serve content potentially kind of like le- um, like learning type content as well training that sort of stuff potentially yeah. the types of the types of content that allow someone to take uh, make a business case internally so things you know whether it's battle cards or product sheets or um, you know roi calculators or, or anything of that ilk where you can kind of then take things back into the business and make your make your case you know people aren't people aren't stupid they don't need necessarily to be handheld for everything all the time um and actually often it's a case of being giving them the tools that they need in order to be able to you know get get to where they want to get to so i think that's yeah absolutely a, a really good point that that not everything has to be leading to that workshop or demo call um for sure and as a content writer 
work with work with your sales team work with your strategists mm -hmm. use that insight that they have and just figure out who is this person i'm talking to what actually do they want mm -hmm. not what do i want them to do yeah necessarily. yeah yeah and build it around that side of it yeah yeah that's yeah it's absolutely a great great shout because i think people people are you know marketing still works 100 percent, it still works but people are wise to the kind of the tricks and the the sly you know yeah. Uh, tactics and stuff it's 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 a lot more about being authentic and being and building that trust as, as we as we've kind of mentioned that the, the you know the, the the more real you can be the the more likely you are to have that relationship with someone and be able to actually then tra translate that into something positive uh you know in terms of opportunities and stuff down the line but um yeah good stuff well lucy thank you so much for joining me today it's been uh been a pleasure to, to chat to you and um i'm sure we'll we'll have you back on again soon as well if if you'd like to um to discuss more more areas around uh content i'm sure um but yeah thanks for joining me today and we'll we'll catch up soon excellent thanks joe it's been a pleasure cheers